once you've written an essay, you have to think about how it's going to come across to your reader. The very first thing your reader will see is your introduction. This is a crucial part of your paper. If your introduction is not strong, you might lose your reader even if the rest of your paper is great. So you should spend extra time on this part of your paper. To start with, let's talk about what a strong introduction does. There are two main goals that you have when you're writing your introduction. First, you want to welcome your reader to your paper by grabbing their attention and making them want to stay, making them want to keep reading. Next, you want to provide your reader with an overarching sense of your purpose and where they're headed. Why are you writing this? What can they expect to find out? It give your, gives your readers a map of what's to come. Perhaps one way to show what a good introduction does is to take a closer look at a not so good introduction. You can think about some introduction red flags, like being too self-reflexive about the fact that you're writing a paper, or not having a hook that really grabs the reader's attention, not giving context or purpose, and lacking confidence and clarity. Let's take a closer look at some of these. So here is an example of an introduction that has some of those red flags. In this paper, I will prove that cats make better pets than dogs. I'll do so by showing you three facts about cats, their independence, their ease of upkeep, and their intelligence. What's wrong with this introduction? Well, it's really self-reflexive about the fact that I am writing a paper. So if I go through and I cross out the lines that are about what I'm going to do, you can see that I wasn't very confident and it's just not very interesting of an introduction to say in this paper, I will prove that. I'll do so by showing you. It's better instead of telling your reader what you're going to do in a paper to just do it. Take out those phrases about what you're going to do and go ahead and do it. Say, cats make better pets than dogs. Here are three facts about cats to help illustrate that. Just go ahead and dive right in instead of telling them what you're going to do is a good way to make sure that your introduction is confident and comes across in a strong way. Here's another example of the same paper. I'm still trying to prove that cats make better pets than dogs. And don't get too mad at me if you're a dog person. I promise I actually love dogs and cats the same. I, I love all the pets. But I just wanted to give you an example that was easy to follow. So if I said cats are more independent than dogs, while both cats and dogs are social creatures, dogs require a lot of attention from their caretakers. Cats are more content to do their own thing. In this case, what's wrong with my introduction? Well. I don't really have an introduction. I just jumped right into my first point instead of really explaining to you what I was hoping to prove. So the introduction is missing and I definitely want to give one that kind of lays out my full argument before I dive into one of my main points. Here's another example of an introduction with some red flags. Some people may think that cats make better pets than dogs. These people could believe this because cats might seem more independent, require less care, and could be seen to have a high degree of intelligence. In this case, my introduction is full of hedge words. Some people may think, could believe, might seem, could be seen. I don't sound like I believe what I'm saying. And I want to say it like I mean it. My reader is probably not going to believe it if I don't sound like I believe it. So I definitely don't want an introduction that feels too hedgy or too like it lacks confidence. So I want to make sure I have a confident introduction. So those are some examples of introductions that aren't doing the job that they need to do. What are some strategies you could use to write better introductions? I want to tell you about five of them. You could start your paper with a story, a startling fact, a quote, a strong opinion, or a question. Let me show you some examples about what each of these might look like for our cat paper. Here's a way I might start my cat paper by telling a story. When I was five, my cat Lucky showed up on my front door. At first, we tried to find who Lucky belonged to, but it became clear that Lucky belonged to us. More specifically, Lucky belonged to me. From that point forward, we were inseparable, and I've been a cat person ever since. In fact, I'm convinced that cats make the very best pets, and once we examine the facts, I think you'll agree with me. So in this case, I started with a personal story, but you can tell by the end of the paper that I'm not just telling you about Lucky. I'm telling you about cats and how they make good pets in general. So I started with that very specific story about Lucky, and then I broadened out to cats in general. And you can tell that all in the first paragraph. But by telling you that personal story, I really kind of grabbed your attention and uh, made it more likely that you're going to keep reading, even if you disagree with me, even if you don't think cats make the best pets. Here is another way to start this introduction. Famous allurophiles, 
Through the years include Abraham Lincoln, Calvin Coolidge, and Catherine the Great. How can you be more like these famous leaders? All you have to do is love cats. The term allurophile comes from the Greek words for love, philos, quick moving, aeolos, and tail, aura. And then I have my source. It's from the online etymology dictionary. Both historical and current aeolophiles have it right. Cats are definitely something to love. In fact, they make the very best pets. So here I went into my research. I did some research and found out information about this word and it's it where it came from. And in doing that, I probably told most readers something that they didn't already know and grabbed their attention and then led into this thing about how I'm going to argue that cats make the best pets. And so I used these this fact this interesting, startling, or you know, lesser known fact in order to get that attention to get to my main point. Or I could start with a quote. Mark Twain once wrote, if animals could speak, the dog would be a blundering outspoken fellow, but the cat would have the rare grace of never saying a word too much. This perceived distinction between cats and dogs is long-standing, and each animal has its own defenders. I'm squarely on the side of the cat, and the evidence in the feline's favor is quite convincing. So by starting with Mark Twain's quote, I'm showing that there's kind of this famous debate going on, and then I kind of position myself as a person on one side of that debate to get into my overall argument that the rest of this paper is going to take, that cats make better pets than dogs. Basically, my whole argument here is a very strong opinion, but I could just lay it out with a really clear sentence. Cats are better than dogs. That's right. There's no reason to beat around the bush, so let's get right to the point. Dogs require a lot more work without giving any additional benefits. Cats, with their penchant for independence, provide affection and tricks on their own terms, providing a deep companionship rooted in mutual respect. The love of a cat is one of the best things in life. So there, I just kind of took the controversy, the the debate between cats and dogs, and just took a stance from the very beginning. Whether you agree with me or whether you disagree with me I probably have your attention by coming out with such a strong opinion and finally I could ask a question what makes a great pet is it low maintenance entertainment value the potential for snuggles no matter how you define a great pet cats are going to rank near the top let's take a closer look at what makes the furry feline such a fantastic friend so here again I just got that that question to help grab the your attention and to make you want to keep reading it's a pretty short introduction but it got to my main point that my paper is about what makes cats such great pets I gave you these examples just to provide some illustrations for ways to make your introduction more interesting and effective. And if you're a dog lover, I hope you're not too mad at me. Like I said, I actually really love dogs too. My main piece of advice is that you have to make your introduction your own. Your reader should have a real sense of who you are and why you're writing from the very first paragraph of your essay. If you've done that, you'll have their attention and you'll be able to use the rest of the paper to prove your point. Mm -hmm.